a stately five-story pagoda reaching up to the sky. This traditional architectural style, built entirely from wood, dates back to the earliest years of Buddhism in Japan, almost 1,500 years ago. Found in many parts of the country, the tiered roofs rising in perfect proportion create silhouettes of outstanding elegance and beauty. Thanks to their remarkable structural strength, no five-story pagodas are known to have collapsed in earthquakes. Modern high-rise buildings use similar design principles to withstand the frequent earthquakes that hit Japan. This 1,200-year-old pagoda suffered major damage in a typhoon. Craftsmen were brought in to repair it, shedding light on the depth of wisdom and skill embodied in this ancient architecture. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we examine the aesthetics and remarkable strength of these Japanese pagodas. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I've come to the Buddhist temple of Ikegami Hommonji in Tokyo. And here in the temple precincts is where we'll find the theme for our show today. It's right over there, so please come with me. This pagoda was built 400 years ago, and it's about 30 meters high. Even from this distance, it's pretty imposing. It's quite remarkable that it's lasted all this time, and it really is an amazing piece of craftsmanship. Pagodas are often featured in posters and postcards to convey a typically Japanese scene. But even for Japanese people, the sight of a pagoda like this imparts a vivid image of traditional Japan. First of all, let's take a look at a number of pagodas around the country. This Buddhist temple, Horyuji, stands in the Ikaruga district of Nara Prefecture. It was founded 1400 years ago. These buildings in the temple compound are the oldest extant wooden structures in the world. Rising 32.5 meters high, the five-story pagoda has an imposing presence, giving a deep sense of its long history. Buddhism was introduced to Japan in the middle of the 6th century and records indicate that this pagoda was built in 607. It stands alongside the temple's main hall where the principal objects of worship are housed. Horyuji was one of the first places in Japan to be registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The pagoda stands tall above the precincts of this ancient temple. In the 8th century, the imperial court moved to another part of Nara. When the new capital was founded, a temple called Korfkuji was built there. It also has a five-story pagoda. Rising 50 meters, this is the second tallest pagoda in the country. It's as high as a typical 13-story building. Rebuilt on several occasions, the current structure was erected in 1426. It's now considered a symbol of Nara's golden age. Kyoto was the capital of Japan for a thousand years. Here, among the elevated bullet train tracks and modern buildings, rises an ancient five-story pagoda. It stands within the precincts of a temple called Toji. At 54.8 meters, this is the tallest wooden pagoda in the whole country. It has been rebuilt several times. The existing structure is the fifth, dating from the 17th century. Since there are few other tall buildings in Kyoto, it continues to dominate the city skyline. Five-story pagodas are found all over the country. This one at Rurikoji, a temple in Yamaguchi prefecture, 
was built in the 15th century. The roofs have beautiful curving tips, with each tier slightly smaller than the one below, making the form slender and elegant. Set among dense forests of cedar at Hagoroyama in Yamagata Prefecture, this pagoda was built in the 14th century. It has survived more than 600 years through the harsh winters of northeast Japan, inspiring awe and devotion. This dignified pagoda is at Hasidera, a temple in Nara Prefecture. Erected after the Second World War, it's one of a number of new pagodas around the country. Pagodas have been built in many parts of Japan and in different historical periods. But they share similar design and construction principles that give them their elegant appearance. One key is the sense of proportion. Each tier is slightly narrower than the one below. It's the ratio between the width of the bottom and top stories that determines the pagoda's overall proportions. This is the pagoda at Miyoin, a temple in Hiroshima Prefecture. The widths of the bottom and top stories are not so different. Pagodas with these proportions have a tall, slender appearance. By contrast, in the case of Horyuji's pagoda, the bottom floor is about twice as wide as the one at the top. Having this substantial base gives the structure a sense of solidity. Another important element that contributes to the graceful form of pagodas is the shape of the roofs. On each tier, the roofs curve upwards at the eaves. This kind of subtle curvature can only be achieved through sophisticated craftsmanship. This company builds and repairs temples and shrines around Japan, including pagodas. It can trace its history back around 1400 years. Using actual size patterns made of plywood, each piece of timber is cut with the greatest of care. The beams used for the eaves must be given a delicate curvature. It takes considerable experience and skill for the craftsman to fashion a beautiful curve. The strength of the wood will vary from one timber to the next. At the same time, the weight of the roof can cause the wood to warp. Taking these aspects into consideration in producing these curves is a test of the skills of temple carpenters. Slender and graceful as they reach up to the sky, the beauty of the pagodas lies in their proportions and the silhouette of their gently curving eaves. It's thanks to the advanced skills of craftsmen past and present that the beauty of these pagodas has been preserved. Let's take a closer look at the pagoda here at Hommonji, which is the oldest in the Tokyo area. You'll see that the proportions of the bottom floor are about the same as the top. It's really very nicely proportioned. You'll see under the eaves the details of the carving, and also there's the balustrades between each floor there. You can imagine that the view up from the top must be pretty magnificent. Unfortunately, though, you can't go up there. It looks like it's a five-story building. In fact, there are no floors and no stairs either, so you just can't go up. Those ornamental balustrades are very nice looking, but they don't have any practical use. Next, let's find out why. The origins of Japan's pagodas go back to ancient India and the earliest days of Buddhism in the 5th century BC. This stupa dates back to the 3rd century BC. Built to enshrine relics of the Buddha, stupas like this are the forerunners of Japanese pagodas. 
The small parasol-like structures on stupas represent the past, present and future of the Buddha. This arrangement changed over the centuries into the finials found on top of Japanese pagodas. The tradition of building stupas reached China along with Buddhism. At the time, multi-story buildings were being developed in China, and this led to the creation of tall Buddhist pagodas constructed from various materials, including wood, stone and brick. Buddhism was brought to Japan in the middle of the 6th century, and pagoda architecture soon followed. At Horiuji Temple, the pagoda with its Buddha relics held pride of place alongside the main worship hall in the centre of the precinct. In those days, a pagoda was considered one of the most sacred Buddhist edifices. Japanese pagodas have a unique interior structure. They were not built for people to climb up inside. Their numerous timbers all served to support the structural weight. Running up through the structure is a central pillar. This supports the finial set on the very top. It sits on a foundation stone that sometimes houses Buddhist relics. This pillar is revered as a symbol of the Buddha himself. This is the pagoda at Toji in Kyoto. Surrounding the central pillar there is a group of 12 statues. The pillar and the pagoda are considered to represent Dainichi Nyorai, the Buddha worshipped in the esoteric schools of Japanese Buddhism. Pagodas like this are an important part of the long history of Buddhism in Japan and remain objects of worship for many people to this day. When pagodas started to be built about 1400 years ago, they were considered the most important structures of their temples, but that changed over the centuries. They came to be seen more as symbols, and that was because of their striking appearance. The pagoda here at Hongmonji is set well apart from the main buildings. Because of its great height, it can be seen from way beyond the temple's precincts. The steeples on western churches and cathedrals were seen as an attempt to reach skyward towards heaven and the divine, and for that reason they were built very high. On the other hand, Japanese pagodas were not a means of reaching to heaven, but rather were objects of worship themselves. When pagodas were first introduced from India into China, they became closely connected with the Chinese architectural style of towers, and then Japanese pagodas started to take the form of these tall structures. They were originally meant to be extravagant buildings housing important Buddhist statues, but then eventually Japanese rulers began to construct pagodas as symbols of their own power, and some were said to be as much as a hundred meters tall. Another impressive thing about pagodas is that they have lasted for well over a thousand years, despite the fact that Japan is a country which is particularly prone to earthquakes. For this reason, pagodas have a reputation for their strength and resilience, and next we'll take a look at the science underlying that reputation. The earthquake that hit Kobe and surrounding areas in 1995 had a magnitude of 7.3. It left more than 6,000 people dead and destroyed numerous buildings, including historic structures and cultural artifacts. This temple, Sumadera, stands close to the epicenter of the quake. Its main hall was damaged along with other buildings, but there was one structure that was...
When an earthquake occurs, the tremors that run through the ground have a high frequency. This causes the pagoda to sway, but at a rate that is slower than the movement of the ground. Because the frequencies are different, the pagoda's swaying cancels out the vibrations from the ground. That's why it's so hard for a pagoda to be toppled in a quake. There's another reason for their legendary strength. This test was conducted on a model of a five-story pagoda built on a one-fifth scale. To measure the pattern of the swaying, it was fitted with nearly 100 sensors. The experiment begins simulating an intense earthquake. Data picked up from the sensors placed on the pagoda was used to create a computer simulation. This revealed that the stories don't all lean in the same direction at once. Some sway to the left, while others sway to the right. Because the pagoda jiggles like a dancer doing the twist, it maintains its balance. If all the stories were to lean in the same direction, the center of gravity would shift and it would topple over easily. But since each story moves independently, the center of gravity doesn't shift so easily. This minimizes the risk of the pagoda collapsing. At the same time, research has also shed light on the role of the complex wooden joints at the tops of the pillars and under the eaves. Each of these joints is composed of several small components which together support the weight of the pagoda. Researchers have found that when the vibrations from a quake reach these joints, this creates friction. They absorb and convert the energy of the quake, heating up while acting as a damper on the shaking. There are more than 100 points in a pagoda where this occurs, helping to prevent it from collapsing. It's thanks to these hidden building techniques that Japanese pagodas are able to withstand earthquakes. Many of the new high-rise buildings in Japanese cities incorporate earthquake suppression technology based on the principles used in traditional pagodas. This architectural know-how dating back over 1,000 years lives on in these modern structures. The structure of Japanese pagodas reflects the philosophy that's also found in martial arts that flexibility can overcome physical strength. According to traditional craftsmen and architects and researchers too, the structure of a Japanese pagoda is so flexible that even the impact of one person pushing on it can be detected. As we've already said, Japan's very prone to earthquakes, and for this reason, architects designing high-rise buildings these days often take their cue from the structure of pagodas. In this way, the skills and knowledge of traditional craftsmen live on to this day in these buildings. Nevertheless, although pagodas are resistant to quakes, they are vulnerable in other ways. And about 10 years ago, one was seriously damaged in a typhoon. Next, on our video, we'll take a look at how traditional craftsmen set about repairing it. Muroji is a temple in the mountains of Nara Prefecture. This pagoda has stood in this tranquil spot, surrounded by a grove of ancient trees, for 1,200 years. However, in September 1998, it sustained damage when a powerful typhoon hit the area. Some 50 meter high cedar trees were toppled by the wind, destroying nearly half of the western side of the pagoda. This was the first disaster of this kind in its long history.
One week later, work started to repair the damaged structure. When the severity of the damage became clear, the experts were shocked. They all thought it would be easier and quicker to rebuild the pagoda from scratch. However, if at all possible, they wanted to avoid demolishing this 1,200-year-old structure. Instead, they aimed to repair the pagoda piece by piece to restore it to its original beauty. They set to work straight away. For each individual timber, a full-size pattern had to be made out of plywood. These would be used when cutting the actual component timbers. Since the beauty of a pagoda lies in the curve of its roof eaves, this work had to be gauged precisely to the nearest millimetre. The reconstruction work gets underway. Timbers that have cracked are repaired and carefully put back into place. The newly cut components are also slotted into position. The crucial thing is to ensure that the curve of the roof is right. There is absolutely no room for error. In the course of the repair work, a major discovery is made. As the wooden timbers are disassembled, the craftsmen find traces of splices throughout the old structure. When major repair work was done in the past, the craftsmen simply replaced the cracked parts with fresh timbers. As much as possible, the old timbers were left in place in the pagoda. In this way, the spirit of the craftsmen of past centuries was passed on to the present day repair team. The repair work brings to light many interesting facts about the pagoda and the way in which it has been maintained. Of the more than 6,000 component timbers, over 60% date from the original construction. These 1,200-year-old timbers have survived through numerous restoration efforts. This is one of those original components. Analysis shows that the timber is of extremely high quality. The timber is examined by a specialist. So, this is part of the original building? Yes, it is. It's superb. You can't find wood like this in modern-day planted forests, right? They don't grow with a grain like this. Winters are bitterly cold in the area around the temple. The trees that grow in this harsh environment develop very dense timber with fine rings, resulting in wood that is strong and resilient. The strength of these timbers from the surrounding area has supported the pagoda for 1,200 years. Although some of the original timbers can no longer be used due to cracking or decay, they are still preserved.
the original timbers have endured through the centuries, despite the wind and snow. So we must do our utmost to preserve them carefully. They will be there when future generations of craftsmen come to do repair work. These original timbers are very valuable. We want to keep as many of them as we can. I think it's crucial that we do this. Plenty of time is also devoted to repairing the roof. Bark from local cypress trees is used as the roofing material. It has to be stripped from the trees meticulously. In all, about 7.5 tons of cypress bark is needed for the repairs, gathered from about 500 trees. This bark has to be carefully cut and fixed into place. It takes six months to finish this phase of the work. At long last, the final touches are made to the repair project. The ornamental balustrades are put into place. The reconstruction is finished. Fifteen months have elapsed since the devastating typhoon. The pagoda has been brought back to life. It stands gracefully in the middle of the woods. The skill and craftsmanship of centuries past have been preserved and passed on for future generations. It's traditional in Japan when working on ancient structures such as pagodas to do partial repair work as much as possible rather than a complete reconstruction. The desire being to preserve these old buildings that gave rise to the techniques for maintaining them. These structures have lasted for many centuries, some even for more than a thousand years. And when compared to modern buildings which go up and are then torn down in a matter of decades, they inspire a sense almost of awe. I'll see you again next time. Spring holds a special place in Japanese people's hearts, and next time our theme will be the famous symbol of that season, cherry blossoms.